the Catholic Channel, Sirius XM 129 presents Sounds from the Spires with Dr. Jennifer Pasquale, Music Director of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Hello and welcome to Sounds from the Spires. This is Dr. Jennifer Pasquale and you're listening to the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM 129. And as we're recording today, happy Columbus Day to everybody. Today we have a very special guest, Chris Mulia, who is from Arizona and is joining us today. So welcome, Chris. Good morning. Hi, thank you. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Yeah. And so you're in Arizona right now, and that's where you're from I originally? Am. I am. Yeah. I was born in Ohio, but I've always lived here pretty much. Okay. I can remember. Yeah. And Chris is a wonderful speaker, writer, songwriter, and has uh, great music to share with us today um, uh, through OCP. We have um, some great recording songs for you today. And Chris has about four or five. I've looked at your website. So that's fantastic. And we'll let, let people know how to get a hold of your recordings um, during the show. So thank you. And um, how'd you get your start in liturgical music, Chris? Well, I was singing to the church, you know, uh, kind of by accident, I guess. You know, somebody heard I could play guitar and I so many years ago now I ended up you know playing at the youth group and then at mass and things just kind of progressed from there and before I knew it I was writing music and yeah I don't I don't think it's uh, much more complicated than that really it just kind of happened uh-huh and um, what what came first to you the your performance skills or or your faith in your music um, definitely well, I started playing music when I was younger. I didn't grow up in any particular faith background, uh-huh. although I was baptized Catholic, and I do have memories of going to church uh, here and there, uh-huh. uh, but but it didn't mean anything to me, nor did I really understand it. Um, so it wasn't until college that I had converted in non-denominational faith. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so definitely the music came first as, you know, I played guitar and mostly kind of a rock-based um, you know, all my buddies were playing guitar, and that's just kind of what we did. Um, and then at some point, I started to put it together that maybe I could use that, you know, to serve in the church somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. And you've recorded with both Tom Booth and John Michael Talbot, who's been on this show before. What was that like, uh, traveling with, uh, probably internationally with those folks, right? Well, I, I haven't traveled uh, with with them. I've done a lot of work with Tom Booth. Uh-huh. Um, I traveled on John Michael Talbot's uh, a while back, his Troubadour, I guess it's a label or, or um, circuit, I guess they called it. I don't, I don't remember. It was a number of years ago. Uh-huh. Um, but, but no, I'm not, I'm not personal friends with, with, with uh, John Michael Talbot, but very close to Tom Booth. Okay. Yeah. And then you joined the OCP family in 2003, and uh, thanks to Molly O'Hara for, for setting up uh, this interview with you. It's great. And um, so before you were, you joined the OCP family, you were um, writing songs for the church and uh, playing songs in church as well. And, and then OCP picked you up. How did that happen? Um, it, it, it's kind of a funny story. There is a, a, here in town, there was a group of composers, Jesse Manabusen, I believe, Steve mm-hmm. Angrisano, and a bunch of other composers and, and somehow the event that they were supposed to have got canceled or the venue they ended up at my church where I was the music director. And I think as a courtesy, they just allowed me to play. Uh-huh. Um, and then the, you know, some of the, the reps from OCP um, liked what, what they heard from me. And that's pretty much how that happened. Yeah. Well, you, you've got to be a great guy because I know that the OCP family is made up of really great people, faith-based people, really nice folks, as well as fantastic musicians. So happy to have you here today. And um, you have a new recording out, uh, God So Loved the World. Tell us about this one. Yeah, yeah so it's, uh, what is it? I think it's seven songs. Um, and it's, you know, I think throughout focused on all of the ways that God loves the world. Uh, not, it's not particularly themed around, you know, the famous God so loved his world that he gave his only begotten son verse, uh, although that's certainly part of it. Uh, but but God so loves the world 
um, in every way that he does, from the smallest atom to the most distant galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's really what I wanted to explore with the, the collection. Yeah. And um, what comes first to you when you're writing a song? Does, do the, does the text come first, or do the lyrics come first, or the, the tune, the harmonies? It, it depends. I think I think it depends. I think at the end of the day, um, it's always work. You know, there's no like every now and then a song will come out, but usually it's a labor, mm -hmm. um, and, and often it's collaborative. Especially when you're working with a publisher, you you know you send it in, and they'll say, you know, we need you to go a slightly different direction, or that lyric, um, you know, rubs up against our theology uh, in a way that maybe they're not comfortable publishing. Uh huh. Um, you know, for example, I had a reference in one of the songs about um, coming to the table, and that was one of the things they pushed back on about, you know, because we're not, everyone's not legally or particularly welcome to our theology uh, without maybe attending a class or a catechesis or whatever, that mm -hmm. they didn't want to release it in that, with, with that direct lyric. So that's an example of a collaborative effort where they'll send it back and say, you know, craft that a little bit differently. and. You know, and that's what we have to do. We have to respect the process and, and how that works. Sure. With the, like I said, with the liturgical publisher. Yeah, that's interesting to know what the process is. I, I don't know whether you just submit a song and they say, oh, great, and they take it as it is or you tweak. So it's, it's interesting to know that process. Very rarely. Yeah, very <laughs> really? Rarely. Uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, yeah, let's listen to a little bit of it first, and then we'll uh, continue talking to you about your music making, your career. And so we'll listen to the title track. God So Loved the World, and our guest today is Chris Mulia. church, the body of Christ, God so loved the world. We hope in the promise of eternal life, God so loved the world. Let us lift up our hearts to the one who pours out his mercy and
and that's God So Love the World, the title track to God So Love the World. And our guest today is Chris Mulia from Arizona. A beautiful song. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And that would be, that would be one that they did not uh, ask for any revisions on. So. <laughs> Great. Uh, good job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your inspiration behind this particular song? Well, I remember I was at Mass, and, uh, you know, that reading had come up. And for, for whatever reason, I left afterwards just thinking about, uh, again, what does it mean that God so loved the world? What's our response to that reality? Mm-hmm. Um, again, from, from our very lives to the church to, you know, just, just the whole thing. Um, and I think at the end of the day, we're compelled uh, to be together in community, to gather, you know, obviously proclaim, celebrate. We're wired to love, give, and serve. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the goal was just, you know, to reflect that reality, um, that really everything we do is is in, in that name, in that space, mm-hmm. you know, not just in church, but everything really should be. That's right. Yeah. Great, great, yeah. great words. And um, the the picture that is on the cover of this, this album, I'm looking at it on the computer, um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's the universe and... Um, where did you get that picture from? Uh, that was one of the graphic designers uh, on the project found it. I, I wrote to them and I, I just said, you know, I don't want to use the standard, um, you know, John 316, God's will of the world thing that we see on billboards. And, uh-huh. um, and I, I explained to her what I explained to you, you know, the, the idea of God loving the world. Um, in every breath and so on and so forth. And, and she came back with that, which I just thought was, as soon as I saw it, that's it, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> Perfect. So. Yeah. So God So Loved the World, it's available through OCP. Um, Chris Mulia, our guest today, is the artist. And you can go to ocp.org uh, for the album or any of Chris's albums. Um, if you just go to ocp.org, you can type in his name, Chris Mulia. M-U-G-L-I-A, and you can find out uh, how to get those. Or go to his website, chrismulia.com, M-U-G-L-I-A. Great stuff. And um, it's something you can pop into your car and just listen to all day, especially if you have a long drive. It's really, uh, you know, it makes you think, it makes you pray, and uh, great stuff. And um, so you've written a number of songs. How do you capture what you want to put on a recording you've probably written hundreds and then narrow it down to to seven or eight yeah (laughs) i I would say again that uh it's collaborative it's it's not only collaborative with my publisher but my friends my wife uh, my kids you know Uh um i just try to listen to what what people say and the feedback they give and um, you kind of know you know some songs stick some don't uh, but, yeah. but again, I think it's just, it is through quantity that, that really you end up with something at some point that you say, okay, you know, these are the ones and we'll, we'll settle on those. And, you know, the other ones either get revised later or, you know, uh-huh. we'll make the cut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the musicians that are on the recording, did you pick them out, hand select them or, um, how did you find them? I did. Yes. Uh, so there's a. You know, some of these guys I've worked with over the years, uh, the drummer, I believe, uh, Dan Needham, and the bass player, Matt, uh, they, they're both Nashville uh, session musicians. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where I started. What was interesting about this recording is it's really the first first one that I've done that was um, where we weren't necessarily all in the same room th- from the beginning, uh, which is usually you start with everybody together. Mm-hmm. Um, and you try to get as much of the rhythm tracks done, and then you do the overdubs later. With this, um, I went and I just did the bass and the drums, and then I uh, flew back to Arizona and started adding other parts and ended up, you know, using shipping off tracks back to Nashville for strings and things like that, mm-hmm. um, which which for me was a different process. I, I'd like to try to get as many people in the room at, as, at the same time as we can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for whatever reason, this one just didn't didn't end up that way. But I'm, I'm still very happy with the result. Surprisingly happy, actually. I didn't I didn't know how it would how it would work. Uh-huh. You know, 
not having approached it that way before. <laughs> That's amazing what you can do with technology today, and you don't, people don't have to be in the same room to make a fabulous recording. <laughs> Uh, it really is. I mean, it, you know, professionals are professionals and they know what to do. Um, mm-hmm. But but you really do uh, surrender and you, re- you have to relinquish a lot of trust to these arrangers. You know, we just hand them something, especially the, the string arrangers, you know, um, b- because, you know, there's only so many revisions you're going to get when you're dealing with that many people in an orchestral setting. Uh-huh. Yeah. Unless you have an unlimited amount of money to keep revising. Them, you know, That's right. Yeah. yeah. And um, how how long does it do you do you say it takes you to write a song like this one, God So Loved the World? Well, again, I'm hesitant to put a, a time frame on it. Uh, I don't. I actually don't remember what it took to write that one. <laughs> um, some of them come out faster than others. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but, but yeah, I, I always, whenever people ask me about the process, um, I, I just always go back to its work. Um, it's, there's no magic formula. There's no, like, I'm in the spirit and these things pop out of me or, um, you know, I, I think it's all of that. And I think it's work, mm-hmm. um, like any other job. Um, you work on it and you work on it and you, and you have to be willing to do that. Right. Do you, do you consider yeah. yourself a perfectionist? Uh, for sure. <laughs> um, I might consider, yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah. I might word it more like an insecurist, you know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all for God. You want to make sure you, you know, you've, you've, cro- you've dotted every I and crossed every T and, you know, but Absolutely. Right. Sure, of course. So we're listening to selections from God So Love the World, an album by Chris Mulia. And you can get this recording from OCP.org. That's Oregon Catholic Press, OCP.org, um, or any of Chris's recordings. And you can go to his website as well, ChrisMulia.com, M-U-G-L-I-A, to find out more about him and see pictures and uh, all his other recordings. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes to continue talking to Chris and to listening to more of his album, God So Love the World. You're listening to Sounds from the Spires on the Catholic Channel, Sirius XM. 129. Sorrow and shame You are well 
place in your purpose Open your eyes, see the new life that awaits you is You Are Welcome Here, and our guest today is Chris Mulia. He's the artist, and his recording is called God So Loved the World, which you can get at ocp.org. That's Oregon Catholic Press, ocp.org, um, and or any of Chris's recordings. So go there, and you can go to his website as well, chrismulia.com, M-U-G-L-I-A, uh, to see pictures, find out more about him, how, find out how to contact him if you're interested in getting him to perform at your church, uh, diocese, uh, whatever. If you're in that capacity where you can't have somebody come out and speak or give a concert or both. So Chris Mulia, audiences call him thought-provoking, honest, and transparent with a message that inspires listeners to live in heroic ways. That's on Chris's website. So beautiful. Um, you are welcome here. And um, Chris, you uh, have songs that are published worldwide in multiple languages. Um, do you write those languages or do you have somebody uh, translate them for you? Do you sing them yourself? Oh, uh, <laughs> OCP would, you know, whatever they've translated into Spanish or I've heard them in Korean. Uh, really? Uh-huh. Yeah, so it, you know, again, they're they're always they're, their catalog and their span is global. So mm-hmm. uh, as they translate, um, yeah, that that's how that happens. <laughs> Do you sing in different languages? I, well, I know a little bit of Spanish. Yeah, but, but uh, not not enough to put it on my resume. Uh huh. Out there in Arizona, probably there's um, maybe a number of Spanish speakers in the parishes there. No, or absolutely. Yeah. 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 And um, you're a certified life coach as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, sure. Can I? Can we talk about the song we just heard? Oh, sure, of course. Um, yes, yes. And 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 uh, make our way back around. Yeah, to yeah. That, of I think course. that will tie tie <laughs> together in in some regards. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of of all the music that I've written, um, I want to mention to you that I've received the most feedback about that one. Really? Uh-huh. Uh huh. You are you are welcome here, and mostly unsolicited feedback. Uh, because I think it's interesting as you, again, you start to talk about concepts of, um, you know, theology or doctrine or who's welcome or who's not. Everybody has an opinion on what, what that should be, mm-hmm. um, um, which groups in, which groups out. Um, but, uh, you know, if we look at the, the heart of Christ in the Gospels and what he tended to do over and over again is include everybody, mm-hmm. especially those that that, you know, culturally thought, you know, should not have been included. Anyway, so like I said, I've received so much feedback about this, um, and I could, I could tell you some funny ones, uh, but the one that, that I, I talk about the most when I speak, uh, I heard this about that song, well, you're welcome to come here, but you can't stay that way, right? <laughs> uh-huh. And I understand the sentiment, because what that person was telling me is that, you know, uh, you know, we should we should grow, we should change, and that's the nature of God, to heal, to be restored, to be renewed, to make progress. Yes. Um, that's been my experience and the experience of so many I love. Uh, but what I think is problematic in that statement is that it suggests that somehow uh, I'm responsible for that change. 
or I'm responsible for your change or the change of anyone else. Uh, to me, that's God's job. Mm -hmm. It's my job to simply welcome and let God worry about the other parts. Um, so, you know, as I, as I think about who's, who's welcome, uh, good Lord, I mean, uh, who among us, right, could throw the first stone? I know uh -huh. my experience and the amazing people that welcomed me, um, my heart is just wired to, you know, open the doors. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love the concept of, of the mess that would create. <laughs> uh, I think we can handle it, and I think we should handle it. Mm -hmm. And I think if that were our approach to church, uh, there would be waiting lines out the doors. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for phrasing it that way. That's really a really great way to think about it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So in that spirit, uh, you asked about um, uh, life coaching. Yes. Um, I came into the life coaching um, space uh, when I hired a coach for myself. Um, I'm I'm also a business owner. Uh, I own the Catholic Web Company. Oh, okay. And uh, that's, that's, you know, made me learn business and made me learn procedure and made me learn how to manage my own emotions and uh, – you know, that I can, I can choose how I want to show up in the world. And, mm -hmm. um, a lot of that, um, was through the coaching process, you know, and I just, I hired a coach to help me see what I couldn't see for myself. Mm -hmm. I was so fascinated with the material. Um, and I, I really saw a crossover between what we do as church. And I think what that, what the coaching space gives us is, some you know, really some practical tools to apply it, some methodology uh, because a lot of times what I've been frustrated with in the church is I'll get a concept, but there's not really a how-to. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, go home and be a better father. Okay, how do I be a better father? Uh -huh. Exactly how do I do that? Um, so I think if you don't ever learn how to properly deal with, you know, whether it's emotions or, you know, this feeling or that feeling, um, what that might mean or not mean, then you're really at a loss. And And I don't know that the church is necessarily set up to, to do that. Um, so I love it. I'm kind of a, a self-development, personal development nerd, and, you know, I just eat it up. <laughs> That's great, I like though. I know as much about myself as I can. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you combine your life coaching along with um, your music in in speaking presentations? Yeah, when it, when it applies, absolutely. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, and especially with uh, youth, or well, I shouldn't even say that. I, I shouldn't qualify it that way. Yes, because we all need to know. Um, again, these are great concepts. So um, I don't know if you're going to play the song "Greatness." Um, we certainly can, or not. Yeah. But uh, again, that's that's another one. Like, who really believes that? Who who actually believes that we're, you know, called and and uh, are great on any given day? That's like an inner battle. And if, and if somebody does say that, usually we perceive that as a little too self-confident or, you know, like, I'm great and I'm going to go accomplish this, right? Uh -huh. But yet that's exactly the language that uh, is used, you know, through our baptism and God certainly sees us as, as great. And I can certainly see you that way. Uh, you could probably see me that way, but often it's hard for us to see ourselves that way. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for explaining that. It's uh, That must be really interesting to work with people who feel an internal need, and then you're there to help them out. Um, it must be really rewarding. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. And I, I, all I'll say about it is um, anybody that that works in any capacity like that, I mean, really what we just need to do is help one another get out of the way of ourselves. Uh, we just get stuck in these ways of, of thinking and behaving that really limit our full potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, so to me, any any tool, anything we can do to help with that process, uh, I'm all over it. I love it. I love <laughs> to get messy and uncomfortable and, and all that that entails. Good for you. That's great. Uh, I know you know, I, we all know people who are just kind of stuck and won't budge. And, well, yeah, it's right. You're right. Uh, we should uh, get messy in order to grow. If we If we don't do that, then there's the room to grow uh, closes, the gap gets smaller. So let's listen to a little bit of Chris's Chosen and Called, Greatness, and this is on the album God So Loved the World. to the light You call 
called my name and gave me life You stole my heart and saved my soul When I was lost you led me home
Who are we but mortal beings? From dust we came, and dust will be. For our free will and reasoning, we stand in awe. The depths of earth, the highest star, the universe, our beating hearts, the thoughts we think. The dreams we dream, we stand in awe. How can we not lift our eyes, raise our voice to the highest height, let our hearts cry out anew? We come to worship you. We come to worship. You for all you've done and do. We come to worship you for every beating heart, for every shining star. You're making all things new. We come to worship you. Desert sand, the ocean sea, the wild beast, the life unseen, the cool night wind, the still day heat. We stand in awe of the mystery. How can we not lift our eyes, raise our voice to the highest heights, let our hearts cry out? And that's a little bit of "We Come to Worship You." And go to ocp.org to get the whole、uh, album. God so loved the world. And Chris Mulia is our artist today. Mulia, M-U-G-L-I-A. So go to ocp.org、um, to get any of his recordings, or also visit his、uh, website, chrismulia.com.、Uh, and you can see pictures,、uh, videos.、Uh, look at his blog.、Uh, the great stuff there, and、um, find out a lot more about Chris. Yes, we only have a limited time. So,、um, what was your inspiration be- behind that song, Chris? And that did that come easy to you to write this one? Oh,、um, I, I think I don't remember. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Same answer as before. <laughs>、uh, um, I, I think I was just thinking about、um, creation. Uh huh.、Um, when I hear that song, it conjures up images of.、Uh, You know, just just again, it, like, almost like the cover of the CD,、uh-huh. uh, just standing there in, of awe, in, in awe of all that this is, all that it entails,、um, mm-hmm. and, and how fragile we are, really, in all of it. That we're, you know, we're kind of on this big ball that's floating around space, and、um, everything that has to happen for life to be sustained、uh, on our planet is mm-hmm. mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would say all of that it w- would have been the inspiration behind that. Of course, what is the response、uh, then? But to、uh, give thanks, sure, give praise, yeah, to worship. On Chris's website, chrismulia dot com, m u g l i a,、um, he has a, a blog and、um, a lot of.、Uh, Positive thinking and p- positive energy stuff there to read,、uh, thought provoking, inspiring. So check out his website.、Um, you you have been married, I see, for twenty four years and a father of five. What's the secret to to longevity in marriage and、um, successfully raising five children? 
relationship. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, very uh, easy answer, relationship. Uh, so when, when you're talking about whether it's a spousal relationship, a relationship with children, uh, you know, the, the key there is uh, to, be, to be interested, to be present, to be respectful. Um, you know, parents ask me all the time, how do you keep your kids uh, interested in their faith? Um, that's kind of the, the top question that I hear all the time. And, and I always go back to that relationship, relationship, relationship. Additionally, if you're comfortable with your faith, uh, your kids will tend to be comfortable with theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, to add to that, um, I, I'm not scandalized really by anything. Uh, my kids go to public school. Everything is a discussion. Uh-huh. Uh, everything, uh, you know, I, they come home. This happened in school today. I saw this going on in the hall. So-and-so's, you know, uh-huh. it's just crazy. Uh-huh. I, I, without naming it all, um, <laughs> I think we could use our imaginations. Um, and my response is always, well, what do you think of that? You know, what's your take on it? Mm-hmm. And to me, we explore that together um, instead of, and I never push back and just say, that's bad. You know, stay away from that. Don't hang out with that guy. Um, I always want to know what we can learn together. Mm-hmm. So that's my long answer to say relationship. Well, that's great. It's a positive way of looking at things rather than just um Preventing your children from doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah, that's great to explore together. Yeah, great advice. And you can't. I mean, the world today, I mean, they've got Google. They've got, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, if your answer isn't satisfactory, uh, the kid's just going to check out. <laughs> or any person, really. Yeah, you know, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, I'd rather just explore it than, than try to have the answers. Mm-hmm. Great advice. So go to Chris's website there um, and read some of his blogs. It's uh, really uh, inspiring and um, in addition to his music. So what he has to say is great as well. Um, and I guess it, you know, in your relationships, forgiveness is um, key as well. well. We'll play forgiven in a second. But um, does that you think forgiveness is a big part of the relationship uh, when things happen? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others. Um, you know, there's immense amounts of data now. Um, you know, there's, the, the church has always taught us um, the value and the importance of forgiveness. I mean, it's fundamental to Christ's teachings. Uh, but now we have data. We have neuroscience. We have actual fMRI imaging that tells us what happens in people's brains mm-hmm. you know, when they when they don't forgive and when they do forgive. Um, Interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, forgiveness is, yeah, key. Uh-huh. I mean, I... For me, it's part of my daily ritual to um, recall someone in my prayer, in my meditation, that I need to forgive and be forgiven from. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely. Great. Great advice. Let's listen to a couple of minutes of Forgiven, and this is Chris Molia, our guest today on the, the album God So Loved the World.
And that's a little bit of Forgiven by Chris Mulia, our guest today. Chris Mulia, M-U-G-L-I-A. And our um, the, the album is God So Loved the World. So go to ocp.org to check that out or any of Chris's recordings. And uh, go to his website as well. So chrismulia.com, M-U-G-L-I-A. Um, and Or if you want to contact him to do a concert, um, life coaching, uh, speaking, uh, you name it. So there it is. And Chris, what was that website that you said you owned again? Oh, the, the Catholic Web Company. The Catholic um, Web Company. We do websites I for see. Uh-huh. Catholic organizations and churches all over the world. Interesting. I was looking around and I, I forgot what you said. It was Catholic Web Company. And I'll check that out later. Yeah. yeah and, um, and just in a nutshell, we have a, a few minutes left. Um, do you have any life advice uh, other than what we've already discussed today for people? Maybe people are just stuck in a rut or just looking for, I don't know, some sign or some sign of positivity for today. <laughs> uh, well, if I could, if I could say anything, it's it's really the the fundamental place that everybody starts in. Um, I, I think when most people, by the time they uh, ask you know someone to help them, it's because they're very much focused on self. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a, a dangerous um, place that never ends well. Um, when we tend to do that, and I'm guilty of it too. I'm not, I'm not trying to preach or say that I'm above that. I think we all do that. Mm-hmm. We all tend to get into negative thinking patterns. Uh, but the key is uh, the quickest way out of that is to serve, to give, to do anything to disrupt that pattern and get the focus off of self. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that again, that, that goes back to the teachings, all the, the teachings of Christ. It's all over the, the saints have taught that, um, but we tend to forget it. Um, yeah. you know, we get focused on mortgage and what's wrong with my life and what's not happening for me and, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the second thing I would say is that we choose our how we want to show up in this world. Uh, so many people miss that detail, um, that I'm going to have a good day if a good day happens to come to me. Um, that, that leaves a lot of chance uh, that I'm not willing to take. Uh, I think we have the choice to choose ahead of time, how we're going to respond to our environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is to show up, uh, you know, positive or negative. Or how it choose. Mm-hmm. It really is, of course, there's things to do to get to that end. Uh, but it really is that easy. Yeah, um, or we're breaking up a little bit here, Chris, but um, that's really great advice from someone who is a, a great speaker and, and a fantastic musician on top of that. So I really uh, encourage you to go to Chris's website, chrismulia.com, um, and that's M-U-G-L-I-A, to look at his recordings, see pictures, videos, and um, read his blog, and go to ocp.org as well for um, some of those recordings as well. And we've been listening to selections from God So Love the World, and uh, we'll finish out the day by listening to Light of the Nations. Um, and uh, contact him, contact Chris through the website as well, chrismulia.com, to get him to perform or do some speeches or life coaching. Um, thank you, Chris, for being with us today, and also thank you to Jake. Uh, And stay tuned next week for Sounds from the Spires on the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM 129. Have a great week.